Tony Caritti here, coming to you again live from Music Mesa 2013, and again with Adrian Hasselhuber, Senior Product Manager. What's up, man? Hey, what's going on? You're in your, you're back in your, your home country. Adrian, you're from, you're from Germany. You're from, not from Frankfurt, though. Where are you from? No, no, I'm from the sunny south, from the Munich area. It's sunny in the south of Germany, too? Well, you know, sometimes. It depends. <laughs> so we have, like, you know, it's the sunshine state. It's Florida in the U.S. But you've been with the company now, um, how many years? 15, 16, 17 years? 18, Tony. It's a lovely 18 years. You're an old man, Adrian. I'm grown up now, yeah. Grown up. Okay, well, all right, so there's a ton of excitement around Pro Tools 11. We're pumped. Um, customers are really, really excited. Some of them are asking, okay, well, how come it took you guys so long to get to you know, 64-bit? Um, maybe you can explain a little bit of what went into that and, and how we got here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's a great question. Um, so, you know, if, if, if you look at Protus 11 in a vacuum, you know, obviously, like you said, you know, it's not clear why we took so long, you know, but um, think of it as the last step in completing our tra transition to the next generation of products. You know, we started in 2010 with the release of the uh, HDR interfaces. We followed that up with HD Native, then HDX, then HD Native Thunderbolt, and the software really served the, the crown jewel that completes that cycle. So we have everything, all the major components of our top line product at that next level. So, and that took a little while. It actually took a little while longer than we thought, to be honest. Um, and uh, and then of course the, the plugin platform was a big part of that puzzle as well, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the plugin developers are so crucial to the success of our platform. And uh, it, it did take a long time for us to develop the new AX uh, specification, this new platform and work with our third-party community to make sure that they have everything that they need in order to implement AX on their end. And, uh, you know, all these things take time. And, um, you know, I'm just very, very happy that we see a huge uptake in terms of 64-bit plugins. You know, we're showing, I don't even know, dozens of plugins here at the booth, and, you know, it's many more to come in the coming months. And I believe that when we ship Protus 11 in the May, maybe June timeframe, they will have the vast majority of developers online with 64-bit versions of their plugins. Yeah, that's been really, really great to see as a, as a user and also obviously as an employee. It's great to see such great support um, here at the show and so many plugins working in the new um, AX 64-bit um, architecture. Um, you know, another component that made this transition, um, I think, tricky and, and less of a straight line for Avid was that we had to transition customers from a fixed point um, platform where, where, like with TDM, we had plugins that are based on a completely different math and yield different results at the same settings. Um, and we had to solve that problem. And then now, um, you know, to port all those guys over to a common AX platform that supports native and DSP, um, you know, this is, it, it, it was just another one of those chess pieces, chess moves we had to take. Um, so, what what are the what what are you most excited about as someone who's worked worked on the team um, about Pro Tools 11? What are you most proud about? Oh my God, this is <laughs> it's a it's a complicated question because there's so many things to get excited about. Obviously, one of the the major uh, uh, selling points of Pro Tools 11 is 64-bit compatibility. So, what does it mean? What does 64-bit compatibility really really mean? It means that we have access to a lot more RAM. We can address a large a, a lot. Uh, more memory in, inside of your computer. So while in the 32-bit environment, we were limited to about four gigabytes of RAM, with 64-bit address spaces, we can um, access, I think, about, it's about two terabytes, theoretically. So, you know, so for the foreseeable future, I want to say, you will not run out of memory. You, know, you can use all the RAM that you have installed inside of your computer. So that's amazing. So sorry, so two, two terabyte sample library is only about six months off, in other words. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Yeah, so you know, it, it just, what it means for the user is that, um, you know, they will not slow down their system. When the system starts to run out of memory, the system will no longer potentially be instable. Um, you know, you can just instantiate as many virtual instruments, basically, as you want, you know. Um, so, you know, you just will not run out of memory. I mean, it's a, at a certain point, yeah, you will exhaust the physical RAM that you have inside your machine, but um, you can definitely work with, you know, if you have, say, 32 gigabytes installed, you know, you can use all of that RAM for Pro Tools. So that's a big step forward. And so, how also, how different is, you know, for uh, 
the, for, for the past 15 or so years, Pro Tools has relied on the DAE, the Digital Design Audio Engine, for all the number crunching, the host processing, um, a lot of the other background stuff. How different is this new Avid Audio Engine when you, when you look at like the core code? Yeah, it's, it's very different, Sony. So we call it, actually we no longer call it DAE, we call it the Avid Audio Engine now, right? So, and it's essentially being rewritten from the ground up. And what we did is we basically analyzed uh, the performance specifications and, and the performance characteristics of Pro Tools. And as, as many users know, um, we were not the most efficient platform when it comes to, say, you know, working with virtual instruments. So we've known about it for a long time. And what we did is we basically re sorry, <coughs> re-architected our engine in such a way that it's basically uh, is way more efficient. It supports multiple cores in a in a better way, in a more uh, uh, you know processing friendly way. So overall, it's it's a way more efficient engine. You can run way more plugins, and um, you will see much fewer of those uh, error dialogues. You know that potentially come up when you run out of processing power. So all in all, great uh, uh, great improvements. That's excellent, and I just I'm just so excited too that we you instilled a, kind of a dual buffer situation where you have some a buffer that's dedicated for playback and one that's dedicated for your input channels. So when you record ARMA channel and you know for the vast majority of us that are recording you know between one and eight channels at the time and most of us really just one at a time, um, you can run those sessions at really, really low buffers and still have the best of both worlds get a ton of plugins. Um, so now that you guys have solved everything and you've given customers and but, I'm joking, obviously, but and speak, speaking of that, before I before I go where I was going to go, IdeaScale. If you if, if anyone watching is not familiar with IdeaScale, go to ProTools.IdeaScale.com. It's a site that 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 uh, essentially crowdsources ideas for the program, and it enables anyone in the community to put their own idea up there and vote any idea up or down. So you have this kind of natural. Um, situa this, this situation where the, the good ideas kind of naturally, or the most popular ideas naturally rise to the top. In this release, you guys have ticked off like five or six of the top ten. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. So, you know, um, IdeaScale, like you said, is, is a fantastic resource for us. Um, it's not the only resource, obviously, right? And we also get input from many other sources, but it's definitely a very important one for us because it's a bit of a barometer for how important certain features are. And we have thousands and thousands of people who participate today and really give us a good insight into what's going on outside of you know, Avid and you know, what kind of features, functions, pain points customers have. And um, yeah, and I think we nailed five, maybe six of the top 10 feature requests from IdeaScale. So I, I'm very happy about that. Well, we, I, I am too, and I know our, our users are really happy. So back to the question, now what? After, what do you do after Pro Tools 11? Vacation. <laughs> well, you guys deserve it. Uh, you guys have been working really long hours, and uh, I know everybody really appreciates it. So thanks again for your time here. Thanks for joining us. Um, Music Mesa 2013, live from Frankfurt. We'll see you online.